Have you ever found yourself wondering why Tinkerbell seems to be the only fairy in Neverland? I mean, think about it. Neverland is this magical realm with only one way in or out, flight. The land seems like a rather lawless area that's inhabited by children, mermaids, and oh yeah, pirates. All of which tend to be somewhat well populated, in the sense that there seems to be more than at least one member of each species. All with the exception of one, the fairies. As far as we can tell, Tinkerbell is the only member of her species in Neverland, and that just seems odd. Well, this is something that we have been questioning for quite some time now, and we think we might have actually finally figured it out. And the answer that we have come up with actually stems from a rather well-known and popular theory about Peter Pan and Neverland. One that you might have heard of already, and that we have briefly mentioned on this channel in one of our earliest videos. That theory is that Peter Pan is actually the angel of death, and that Neverland is actually heaven in the form of an ageless paradise. This theory sees the Lost Boys as children who have passed away, and Peter Pan is their guide into heaven, aka Neverland. Meanwhile, the sinister Captain Hook is the devil who haunts the waters, and scours Neverland in search of every single lost boy, and attempts to drag them down to to hell. Many fans are quite fond of this theory because it offers a great explanation as to why the children never age, and it also fits in really well with one of Peter's most chilling quotes, which is, to die would be an awfully big adventure. And an awfully big adventure is exactly what he delivers on the journey to and throughout Neverland. As we said, this theory is very popular among Disney fans all around the world, but what a lot of people don't know is that there's actually a dark twist that could be made in the theory that basically flips the entire concept around and still makes it just as valid. In this twist, Peter is actually the evil one trying to keep the Lost Boys in Neverland, while Captain Hook is trying to save them the entire time. Better yet, it also explains why Tink is the only fairy in all of Neverland. When it comes to this theory, there are actually two different ways that you can start it, but whichever one you believe, if either, will both lead you to the same theory overall. So the first school of thought is that Peter Pan was a kid, likely a mischievous one, who sadly passed away. After his death, his soul made its way to Neverland, which is really another name for hell, rather than the heaven that the original theory states it to be. The other school of thought is that Peter Pan was never a human in the first place and was always some sort of demon or devil from the hellish Neverland. Either way, the main point is that Neverland isn't heaven, but instead the opposite. And I know what you're thinking, Neverland doesn't really look like hell. And you're right, in no way, shape, or form does Neverland look like the classic, fiery depiction of hell that all of our minds go to when we hear the word. Instead, Neverland seems like it's kind of a hell that someone would be able to survive and possibly enjoy, especially if that person was a child who still found wonder in the world around them. But the thing that makes it hell, and quite different from heaven, is that heaven is often described as a place that a soul goes to to find its peace. There is no peace in Neverland. The children might be able to have fun from time to time, but at the end of the day, they are constantly fighting for survival. Whether it be from hunger, because they clearly still have to eat, otherwise they would be in a great deal of pain. Their souls likely wouldn't die or disappear, but they would feel all the side effects of starvation. And the fact that there are the pirates that they are constantly at odds with, the children in Neverland, aka the Lost Boys, are constantly fighting for their lives. Speaking of pirates, Captain Hook, though he might look villainous, is actually the person who is trying to save the children. Only, the Lost Boys have had this evil image of Hook painted into their brains by Peter, who told them that Hook was trying to capture them and do horrible things. Meanwhile, Hook is actually trying to save the Lost Boys from the wrath of the devilish Peter Pan, the cunning boy who has collected the dying children and brought them to Neverland in the first place. But the Lost Boys believed Peter when he told them that Hook was evil, and that's why they have resisted all attempts that the pirate has made to save them. Now where does Tinkerbell fit into this whole situation? Why would a fairy be helping Peter capture and control the children that he gets his hands on? Well, we believe that Tinkerbell isn't an actual fairy at all, and instead, she's an alcoholic substance that Peter uses as a means of drugging the kids that he kidnapped and took to Neverland. And as a matter of fact, there is a particular type of alcohol that is known to be strong and is often referred to as the Green Fairy. Absinthe was created in the 1790s by a doctor from France who, at the time, was living in Switzerland. 
His name was Pierre Ordinaire, and he originally planned absinthe to be used as an elixir given to patients often to relieve pain or ease them through their sickness. It quickly became a popular alcoholic drink throughout the 18 and 1900s. The spirit is distilled from bitter herbs such as Artemisia, Absinthium, better known as Grand Wormwood, which is mixed with sweet fennel and other various herbs. Typically, absinthe is known to have a high alcoholic content and for the most part comes out as a green color, though sometimes when it's distilled, it will pour clear and colorless. But as we said, it's typically green, hence the nickname, the Green Fairy. So as this theory goes, Peter uses the absinthe, or the Green Fairy, which he tells the Lost Boys is named Tinkerbell, to drug them and have them go along with him to Neverland. Now think about it, he gives them a so-called pinch of fairy dust from Tinkerbell, and tells them as long as they believe in fairies, they will be able to fly to Neverland. And from a child's point of view, this would seem like a paradise, much like heaven. It would be a truly magical adventure in their innocent eyes, but in reality, Peter is leading them to a place where though they might have some good times, they would ultimately spend eternity living in fear and doing their best to survive. Their souls would never be fully at rest. And the theory gets even darker when you think about the process of using Tinkerbell's magic to fly to Neverland. Essentially, once Peter convinces the kids to take the beverage disguised as pixie dust, what do they do next? They jump out a window, not only drunk, but also landing to their deaths. And this is how they start being able to fly. Once their soul leaves their body, they have the ability to fly and move wherever they please. And of course, they're going to be following the green kid who gave them the magic to be able to fly to a whole new world with fun and adventure rather than let their soul find its peace in heaven. And actually, if you look closely at some of the minor details in the animation, it looks like Peter has been doing this on multiple occasions, meaning that each of the Lost Boys likely came from a different area or time period. I feel like the difference in all of their clothing styles gives it away. Not to mention the fact that when he went after Wendy and her siblings, it would have been a while after gathering his band of Lost Boys, again, just by noting their different styles of clothing. Now, I know that most children would be smart enough and hopefully taught by their parents not to go around accepting drinks from suspicious flying boys that they've never met before, but imagine you're a kid and you wake up to a flying boy around your room, claiming to be chasing his shadow. He then tells you that he is a fairy who has the ability to make you fly just as long as you believe hard enough. There is a good chance that the kid would take whatever that cunning flying boy was handing over, almost without question. I mean, I know as a kid, I always wanted to be able to fly, so I really can't blame these kids for taking the suspicious drink. And funny enough, if you remember correctly, Peter explains to Wendy that there are no lost girls, because girls are far too clever to fall out of their prams, probably hinting at the fact that most of the girls he tried to convince to take the absinthe saw past his BS and said no. Unfortunately for Wendy, her crush on Peter might have just been the cause of her ultimate downfall. But regardless, Peter's whole I believe in fairy shtick was just that. It was a way of getting the kids to take their medicine and anticipate its effects before happily jumping to their death in hopes of taking flight. And to go even further with this, think about what Peter tells his adolescent victims before they succumb to his charm. He says, to die would be an awfully big adventure. And to the kids, I'm sure this just sounds like some wise words from someone who they would follow, but after looking into this theory, these words seem so much darker. Peter is pretty much letting these kids know that they are about to kill themselves when they jump, but in death, he will take them away to Neverland, on an adventure that would last an eternity just as long as he kept them under his thumb. It's a sick and twisted way of getting his victims comfortable enough to trust him, and to take the leap when the time comes. And that time comes as the absinthe, aka Tinkerbell's fairy dust, kicks in. And some people have said that absinthe can be strong enough to make an adult see visions similar to that of an acid trip. So imagine what it would be doing to the mind of a child, especially if it was curated by a devil child, you know he's going to pour it strong. As for Tinkerbell, this would easily explain why she is the only fairy known in all of Neverland. And that's because she isn't a fairy at all, and instead is just a representation of the highly alcoholic and intoxicating spirit that Peter Pan uses to cloud the minds of his victims and ease their way into his clutches. She is the idea of absinthe, only in the form that wouldn't be frightening or off-putting to a child, and one that they would happily take with a promise of magic and adventure. And it would make sense that Peter would use the 
same fairy for each of his newfound Lost Boys. I mean, for one thing, if he chose to go with a different method of killing, he would probably use the name of a different mythical creature or even make one up on the spot. For instance, if he were to use arsenic to poison the boys, he would likely have called it something like the Red Fairy or something along those lines. Anything that would draw the children in and throw them off of their guard. But we believe he stuck with absinthe in the form of the Green Fairy, Tinkerbell, because of his serial killer-like tendencies, according to this theory. Because as you know, most serial killers tend to stick with one method when it comes to taking out their victims. It becomes a sort of ritual to them, one that I'm sure Peter Pan would be familiar with. It was likely the same every time he ran his little scam. He would break into the room of a sick or unhappy child under the premise of, I'm chasing my shadow, something that's really silly because typically a shadow chases you, but also something that a kid would not only believe but would also find wonder in. He would then show off his amazing powers and flying ability, all while boasting about his magical green fairy friend named Tink. Then as luck would have it, he would tell the kids that if they followed his lead and believed in fairies hard enough, they too could join him in the sky and in his home known as Neverland, a place where they could be kids forever and have the best time with other kids and mythical creatures like mermaids. He most likely got his kicks from succeeding in this ritualistic conning of each lost boy, one after another, and because of his sociopathic tendencies, he stuck with this method of using the little green, who, as we said, was really just absinthe. Most of that theory was going on the second school of thought, stating that Peter was the representation of the devil. But if you buy into the first school of thought, stating that Peter was just a mischievous little sick boy who died and ended up in Neverland, this theory still fits in. His motive would just be a little different. Instead of being evil and sociopathic, his motive would have probably just been being lonely, being stuck up in hell, aka Neverland, without any friends and resisting Captain Hook's goal to bring his soul peace, he would have probably sought out companionship, making him not necessarily evil, just a lost soul trying to find companionship in hell. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what school of thought you follow, both forever change how you view this idea of who Tinkerbell is, and why Peter is literally collecting lost children to bring up to Neverland with him. It's crazy to think how such a simple theory, which is already quite sad, might I add, could become even more twisted and sad. But unfortunately, Peter being the cunning devil or the lost soul himself, whichever you believe, seems to fit a little too perfectly. And I'll be honest, when the idea of this theory first came up, I thought it was going to be nonsense. But I don't think I'll be able to look at Peter Pan the same ever again. Unless it's the peanut butter brand, which, with them, I have no quarrels. But what do you guys think? Who is the real bad guy here? Peter or Hook? And what school of thought do you think is more likely regarding Peter being the devil or the first lost soul himself? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. As for now, that's all Disney fans. Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.